Hey guys, I'm Merrick and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking about what to think about, what to consider when you're buying your first luxury handbag, and my tips and also things that I wish I would have known before I bought my first luxury handbag. If you're interested in this kind of video and content about luxury handbags, accessories, and shoes, uh, then I'd love it if you would consider subscribing to help my channel grow. And um, if you're one of my subscribers, then welcome back. It's so great to have you. So. Without further ado, let's get started. So the most important thing to do prior to buying your first luxury handbag is research. So you're already watching this video, so I think that you probably have gotten that point. Number one, which bag do you wanna buy? So maybe you already know which bag you wanna buy and it's always been your dream bag, but perhaps you don't know which bag you want and you're just thinking, you know, I wanna branch out and get something that is beautiful that will last a lifetime. So you need to consider which brand you want to buy. There's a trifecta of kind of the pinnacle of luxury, and that is going to be Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Hermes. Hermes being the mothership of all luxury. Louis Vuitton has more affordable options in the grand scheme of luxury, but those are going to be your canvas bags um, with their leather bags being rather pricey along with Chanel and um, Hermes is even beyond. So if you're considering buying from one of the top three luxury houses, just know that you need to save a lot of money for that. Um, but if you're willing to, you know, branch out of those three, there are a lot of great other options. Um, then you should really consider, especially if you're looking for an all leather bag to be your first purchase, um, Saint Laurent is a really excellent um, option for all leather bags at an affordable price point in the grand scheme of luxury. Um, but there are also many other designer houses that are great, um, that have really good options. So if there's some bag out there that speaks to you that I'm not talking about, then, you know, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what I'm missing out on. When you're considering which brand of bag you'd like to purchase, you know, it's always important to think of, va of bags that hold their value. So going with more classic styles versus seasonal pieces will help your bag maintain its value so if you were to consider selling it in the future. Now I know for me I don't buy bags to resell them um, or at least I haven't ever resold any of my bags but I I think that it is important to consider you know buying ones that will hold their value just in case you do end up wanting to sell it in the future. The next thing you should consider when thinking about which luxury handbag you'd like to buy is going to be your budget. So your budget will depend on your life, but the easiest way to figure out which bag you can afford is by going to the website and looking at all of the bags um, ordered by price and just seeing what fits in your budget. Now, if your dream bag is out of your budget, then that just means you need to save up for longer to get that bag. Um, but I will warn you that all of these luxury houses have been having price increases once, twice, three times a year. So if you're at the point in your life where you're able to afford your dream bag, I would recommend to just go ahead and buy it and don't wait because the price is just going to keep getting higher and it is going to be so frustrating to you whenever you go to purchase the bag and it's increased in price by, you know, up to hundreds of dollars. Another thing to consider with budget is where you're going to be purchasing your bag. So if you're going to buy it locally at your home boutique, then you already know what price it's going to be and then you can already figure in the amount of tax you'll be paying for it. Now, if you're going to be buying your bag while traveling, for instance, I purchased my bag in Paris and I live in the United States. So I was able to buy the bag in euros and then I came back to the US and was able to get the VAT refund. I will warn you that when you get to the border, you have to claim bags that you buy because they're typically over the price of what you're allowed to bring in. So they can tax you at the border um, at customs whenever you're coming back to your country. Um, but still, the amount that they'll tax you is less than the amount of the VAT refund you'll get back. So you still end up saving um, a few hundred dollars. So that could affect which bag you purchase. Now the next thing you should consider is what style of bag are you going to purchase? So this is when you think about your lifestyle and how you dress. Are you a casual dresser? Are you more of a girly dresser? Are you dressed fancy? Do you love tote bags? Do you love shoulder bags, crossbody bags, clutch bags, mini bags, 
bucket bags, backpacks. I mean, there the list goes on. So just think about what bag suits your lifestyle the most and go for a bag like that. For me, I love a crossbody bag and a shoulder bag, but even better if it is convertible to be able to be held either way. So if I find a bag that's like that, my small Lulu and my Speedy 25 Bandolier are both like that. Um, I love them so much, but then I have my mini Lou camera bag from YSL that is only crossbody and it hasn't hindered me at all from using it. So just think about what style of bag fits your everyday life and what capacity do you need? Do you carry a lot of things all the time? Then don't buy a small bag. Or if you only carry a few things and it annoys you whenever your bag is empty or it's running into things, then don't, then, you know, just consider the size of bag that fits your life. Now the next thing to consider is what material is your bag going to be made out of or what material of trim. So for example, Louis Vuitton. So typically their coated canvas is very, very durable. So that comes in the Monogram, Damier Ben, and Damier Azure. Now typically Damier Azure and Monogram canvas come with the Vaquetta untreated leather, which is absolutely beautiful, but is very susceptible to water spots and stains oils from hands, lotions, things like that. So if you're very particular about your bag, and there are sprays and things you can use to prevent that, but if you don't want to go down that line, you just want to buy it off the shelf, use it, then I would consider something like Damier Bin, where the canvas is coated so it doesn't have that water stain, water spot um, susceptibility. Another thing to think about is if you're buying a full leather bag, if you want a bag that's gonna be more hard wearing, then go for a leather that has some graining so that it's not as easily scratched. Whereas the smooth, shiny leathers can be scratched more easily. So, you know, and if you live in a warm, humid, wet climate, then you know, avoid suede bags, avoid patent leather bags, things like that. So just look into where you live and how you'll be using the bag and think about whether you want canvas, leather, or even a fabric bag. And also the color of the bag. Like, Do you want a black bag because it will go with everything in your wardrobe? Or do you tend to wear more lighter colors so maybe a white or a beige bag would work with your wardrobe better? So just think about the color of the bag and also the hardware. Usually you can get gold hardware, you can get silver hardware. So just think about what works best with your lifestyle so that you're getting a bag that, that you can use easily with all of your outfits. And then once you've narrowed down to your top contenders of bags, then hit YouTube, hit the internet, and do your research, which you're probably already doing since you're watching this video, on all the bags that you are interested in. So it's great to get firsthand experience and tips from people who already have and use these bags to see if it's going to work with your lifestyle or if there's little annoying things about the bag that you wouldn't know about unless you're using it and would those things annoy you or, you know, would you actually love the bag for the reason why the person doesn't love it? So things like that, just so that you're making sure that you're getting a perfect bag because we all save up our hard earned money to spend on these bags and we want them to work with our lifestyle. Okay, so now that you've done all of your research and you know which bag or bags you're interested in and buying, now you need to go try the bag on to make sure that it, what you think will work for you actually will. So you wanna to go to a store that has this bag. So maybe you have a Louis Vuitton, for instance, store in your city. And you need to go online and find out, is this an appointment only store? Do I need to call? And, or do you just go stand in line and wait outside? But you, did, you need to get to the store and try the bag on in person if you're able to. Not every single bag is gonna be available, but you know, at least go so you can feel what the bags look like and then you can meet a client advisor or a sales associate and that way you, know, you have their contact information. So maybe you don't buy the bag that day, but at least you have a contact for someone that you can then make an appointment later when you decide to buy um, and you can like build that relationship with that person. It makes it a lot easier for you. Now, when you go to the store to try on the bags, you absolutely do not have to buy the bag that day. Don't feel pressured. This is your money and this is your decision. And if you wanna try on multiple bags and then you know take pictures of yourself holding the bag and then you know try putting all your things in the bag and see if it works for you. And then if you need to go home and sleep on it or think about it, that's absolutely okay. Um, it's really important when you go into the store, make sure you know what you're looking for. So you've already done your research. So you go into the store and knowledge 
knowledgeable about the bag styles that you want, the materials that you want, the hardware that you want. And then you can ask your sales associate if you can see bag X, Y, or Z. And you can always ask, are there any other bags that are similar to the style that you would recommend that maybe I didn't see online? And then they can help you. But going in not knowing anything about what you want or any bag styles is just not a good idea because the sales associate will not know how to help you. And honestly, I think they get annoyed by that. So I would avoid doing that. I'd go in knowledgeable and then see if they have any additional recommendations. And that way you can get more time with the bags that you're interested in seeing. So now that you've done your research on your bag, you've gone to the store and tried on the bag, now it's time to pull a trigger and buy the bag. So your first option is going to be buying the bag from the store or online if you don't have a store near you, or you can buy from a pre-loved site. So I think both are good options. I think a lot of the, you know, more popular classic bags might have a bit of a markup on the pre-loved market or sometimes you can find some good deals but just make sure if you're exploring the pre-loved market that you're making sure you're getting an authenticated bag from a good trusted source because there are people that sell fakes out there so just make sure that you're not getting duped and just be really careful when you're doing that. I don't have a lot of experience with the pre-loved market so I'm not a great resource for that, but I know there's a lot of people um, out there on YouTube who've bought plenty from the, re from the resale market, so if I ever decide to go down that path, I will definitely be watching videos. So I have some recommendations for you on some bags that I think are great first luxury bag purchases, and I have them all here with me. I've actually done individual review videos on all of these bags, so on the Saint Laurent Small Lulu on the Saint Laurent Mini Lou camera bag and on my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 25. So I think these three options are great for your first luxury purchase and mainly because each of these bags are very durable and hard wearing but also have multi-functionality. So you know, each bag can be used on a daily basis casually, and then I think the Saint Laurent bags are, can be dressed up for nicer events. The Speedy is pretty casual for all the time, but it's a great workhorse bag, and I just love it. It has so much capacity, so if I need to carry a water bottle, that's my go-to bag, because these other two are a little bit too small for that. But check out those videos if you're interested in more of an in-depth review on those and then I'll, I'll always link down in the description bar um, all the stuff I talk about in this video. So my first luxury handbag was actually this beautiful Palos BB from Louis Vuitton. I bought this bag in 2019 um, from the Champs-Élysées store in Paris and I actually before buying this bag I'd always loved luxury handbags and accessories and shoes, but I never really considered purchasing them for myself, mainly because I was still a student and, you know, saving up for this was not an easy feat. But when I knew I was going to Paris, I went with my cousin who loves Louis Vuitton. She suggested we go to the boutique and I said, you know what, I think I'm going to save up for a bag because what a, I mean, who doesn't want to go to Paris, go to the store in the Champs-Élysées and come home with a bag? So I actually came to YouTube and this is when I started my luxury YouTube journey as a watcher, of course. I didn't start my channel until just recently, but I started watching videos and the first bag I actually wanted to purchase was the Speedy B25 um, in Dom Mirabin. And I didn't, I had the opportunity to purchase it in Paris. Actually, they only had it in monogram in Paris. And so I was a little nervous about the Vaquetta leather. And then they brought this bag out. And this bag has leather. It has two pockets on either side. It's microfiber lined and it's just overall more luxurious in every way than the Speedy B25. And I love my Speedy, but it's a canvas bag with a fabric interior. And this is canvas and leather with microfiber. I mean, it just, and it has little feet. I mean, it's just so precious and so, so luxurious that I passed on getting my Speedy and I ended up getting this bag. And I do love this bag and I think it's beautiful. But in terms of how much I use it, my Speedy has gotten so much more use and I bought it 
um, after several price increases. And so I kind of look back and think maybe I should have bought my Speedy when I had the opportunity several years ago instead of just buying it, um, you know, in the, in the last year. But, um, you know, I did my research. We had an appointment at Louis Vuitton. I went in and I knew which bags I wanted. This was a total surprise. And then I ended up, of course, getting a scarf as well, which I have a video on that, which I'll link um, above. But I was as prepared as I could have been. But I think when you consider everything, I am happy that I got this, but I think I probably should have gotten my Speedy when I was in Paris because I think I would have just gotten a lot more use out of it. But then I would have never bought this because this was out of my price range in US dollars. And so um, this wouldn't be part of my collection. So, you know, it's a hit or a miss. I love this bag and I'm glad that I have it. And it's actually discontinued now, so I couldn't even buy it today. Um, so I'm glad I have it in my collection, but I definitely would say my Speedy gets a lot more use. So after all of that, don't forget that luxury is supposed to be fun. So buy the bag that speaks to your heart that you know you'll love and when you look at it just makes you so happy. And then you can use it a lot and you get a great cost per wear. So comment down below what your first luxury purchase was. And if this video was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. And I'd love it if you would subscribe and join our YouTube family. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.